Welcome to uh, Libertarian Counterpoint. My name is John Cameron, and with me here on the show is uh, Michael Graves. Thanks for having uh, me back, John. Yeah. And uh, well, a little bit about me, and then that'll only take like half the show. No. Uh, and then uh, Michael will, will uh, chat a little bit about himself, and then we'll get into the topics that, uh, that more government control over people's lives equals better lives. Then you're a fool, quite frankly. You're a fool. There is no instance in, in uh, anywhere in history where this has been the case. And uh, that's my two-minute intro. Throw yep. it over, to Michael. And have I, him. I agree philosophically. You know, there's specific examples uh, that you could argue are counterexamples, but by and large, people can and should take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. um, I've been a philosophical libertarian for, call it ten years, probably more than ten years now. Uh, growing up, I I sort of had a uh, you know, complicated politics growing up, but um, kind of ended up in this anti-war conservative camp mm -hmm. uh, at one point, and then I was, was a very big um, uh, supporter of Ron Paul mm -hmm. in his uh, 2012 presidential campaign. That's kind of, you know, I learned a lot from mm -hmm. that, uh, that election. You know, Ron would speak about the, um, the Federal Reserve mm -hmm. and, and certain, you know, yeah, issues that he, and, and certainly about um, foreign policy. Uh, which was, you know, the thing that I was the most concerned about. That's mm -hmm. why I was prepared to hear his message uh, at that time. And then I kind of, you know, have taken that and just continued in that direction since then. And uh, in 2020, I got involved with um, the Libertarian Party because I wasn't interested in uh, Trump's Republican Party or uh, the Democratic Party at that point. Um, and now I am have recently been elected at large for LP Sacramento. Cool. XCOM. So mm -hmm. happy to be here. Well, we're happy to have you. Well, uh, speaking of, uh, of uh, you, you, you briefly mentioned the Fed um, yeah. in your conversation. The first thing, this show is uh, mostly about crime with a little inflation thrown in. And we're going to talk about crime because uh, uh, Michael um, uh, has a recent uh, personal example of it. But yeah, first, we'll we're going to talk about inflation and two takes on it. Uh, we're here in Sacramento, so... I always like to use uh, the Sacramento B analysis of as basically uh, bad reporting and misreporting, trumpeting uh, the powers that be as long as they're, they're the deep state or the liberals or progressives or whatever. <clears throat> they recently ran an article about inflation and made no mention whatsoever in the article about the Fed or about money supply. Yeah. And all of the money, of all the money that's been created in this country in the last, was it 250 years or so since we've been around? Right. About half of it's been re, uh, been created uh, recently. It started in, well, it started a long time ago, but it really ramped up uh, end of Obama and then Trump. And now, uh, you know, with Biden, it's just been a printing press. And so um, uh, the B talked about supply chain issues and, and the, the yeah. pandemic. They didn't say, they, they blamed it on the pandemic, but not on the activities the government did to mismanage the pandemic and made absolutely no mention of the Fed or money supply. But Reason, on the other hand, had a, a much more reasoned approach to it. You want to talk about that a little bit, Michael? Yeah, so, well, uh, t to come back to the first thing you said, the Sacramento Bee, you know, they, they ideologically lean left. And unfortunately, when a Democrat occupies the White House, what that means in practice is they are way, way, way too sympathetic to the regime. Mm -hmm. And so we have a situation here where um, there's clearly pretty bad consumer price inflation now. Uh, and that's that's making a lot of people understandably pretty um, upset. And then, you know, it's just like uh, you saw this during the, the last big um, CPI inflation during the Carter presidency in the 70s. Um, and, and before that, you know, kind of started under Nixon. I was actually I around for that. Yeah, you were around, right. I wasn't there. But um, there's always an excuse, right? There's always, you know, oh, it's an oil supply shock is what they were saying back then. Yeah. Um, and now you read this article and you're exactly right. They do, there is no mention of the money supply. It's, well, look, you know, what are you going to do? Um, you know, there's... Uh, uh, supply chain dislocations, port congestion, uh, there's the any avian flu, you know, it's being led by oil prices, but of course, um, and all of those things are true, all of those things are, you know, impact prices, and in a well-functioning um, market system, that would, you know, that information mm -hmm. would get tossed into the mix, and people would, would 
take the appropriate actions to improve the situation, and they don't need direction from central, from some central authority. But um, you know, if all the prices are going up across the board, you know, it's not like, uh, well, the pork congestion is going to come back down, and then the prices are going to go back down 10 percent. No, but literally nobody believes that that is what's going to happen, and that's because the- Paul, Paul Krugman does. Uh, yeah, right. So the, the phenomenon that drives the broad-based um, increase in prices is the money supply. It's how it's too many dollars, or it's an increasing number of dollars um, chasing too few goods, and unfortunately, I just looked this up, um, in the, the current, you know, the, the most recent era, um, post-COVID, 2020 to 2021, um, you know, uh, you think about the M2 money supply, so that's, uh, uh, money as it's, you know, bank, res bank reserves money at the bank and plus cash, but also counts um, checking, you know, just kind of like checking accounts. And, mm -hmm. and I think it includes, um, uh, what's it like, kind of like CDs and, de uh, yeah, demand deposits and stuff. Yeah. Um, and what happened in 2020 to 2021, the, it's, uh, we had a 27% increase in the M money supply as measured by M2 over a two year period, right? And that's the largest. M2 increase ever in the history of our country, it's higher than in the 70s and it's higher, you know, on a two year span, not, mm. that was a decade of inflation in the, in the 70s, but, um, and it's higher than, than anything we saw in, uh, in Second World War. Mm. So yeah, I'm, it's not particularly surprising that we started, you know, when the things have gotten actually, that crazy. It's actually that kind of surprising that, in prices. that inflation is as low as it is. And <coughs> by the way, folks, I think Michael and I will both, we disagree. We agree a lot but we disagree mm. a lot we'll agree that uh, any inflation number that the government pulls out of its hat let's be right. nice uh grossly underestimates the real probably rate low. of inflation yeah. probably low and then um, i have to say that that um you know the the current president i, I call him dopey joe but um it may be sleepy joe mm -hmm. um blames every everything uh, that he has actually had a hand in that he's caused to be worse for, like, oil supply. He's making it impossible for, for refiners in the U.S. to refine oil. He's of making it difficult, it difficult for people to frack, get oil out of the ground. He's put a hold on oil leases. He killed the Keystone Pipeline. Uh, he's uh, uh, increased and made more favorable uh, uh, all of the quote-unquote renewables, which are renewable now, but when we have to get rid of the, the trash that's left in 30 years, they won't be so renewable. So on and on and on. It's, all these things he's complained about, he's actually caused. It's, it's not merely, um, uh, you know, pr problems in the oil industry. They've driven up labor costs by using printed money mm -hmm. to finance borrowing by the U.S. federal government, and then there's been an orgy of federal spending, and it's like, you know, 80% of that has gone to basically special interests, mm -hmm. and then then some of it's just, go, you know, and who knows what they're spending it on, and then some of it's just going to pay people to, you know, it's like, oh yeah, you know, you uh, there's an eviction moratorium, and you know, and there's like all these, there's all these benefits, mm -hmm. and some of those have rolled off now, and that's mm -hmm. um, causing the sting to start to set in. Yeah. But um, yeah, the, the labor market's been, been all screwed up. You can't, mm -hmm. you can't get labor at the same price mm -hmm. That you used if to you, anymore. If you pay people not to work more than they can earn while they're working, they're not going to work. I, that's and only, you, what, what you, would you do? I, you know, I almost like do the same thing. This is a, if, if you send people money and they're not paying their student loans, they're not paying their rent, um, and you're giving them money, they're going to have a whole bunch of money to spend, and they're going to buy toys. Uh, because in the past, we never, we, when they printed money, they never sent it directly to consumer. So they sent it, they gave it to their favored friends in Wall Street, the bankers, the banksters, as I like to call them, uh, and favored industrialists, crony socialism, I call it. But they never sent checks directly to people. So uh, there's a whole bunch of reasons for inflation. And, and you can pretty much uh, all uh, say... Uh, uh, I'm timing myself to make sure that, that, yeah. that we cover more ground here on the show a little more quickly. That uh, the government caused it and the things they're doing uh, that they say will stop it are actually making it worse. Well, the way that they hope to, you know, I mean, they, they're kind of tampering around the edges, you know, okay, mm -hmm. we're going to give you a gas tax rebate that's mm -hmm. smaller than, you know, the price increase that's already happened. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's just going to, are they actually going to reduce 
you're, uh, you know, okay, they're going to lower their taxes, but, uh, you know, they're not going to reduce their, the amount they're spending, mm. right? Mm. I mean, the net spending in the U.S. by all, you know, all government entities combined, which, you know, you can get, you know, just add, you know, the state to the federal, and that's most of it, um, it only seems to go in one direction. Mm. So this well, idea, oh, we're going to fix it by, uh, you know, we'll lower the gas tax for a little while, and that'll get people through this difficult time. Well, we're still um, print that's money. not a good yeah. way to mm. tamp down mm -hmm. um, uh, price increases. Uh, what they are doing, which is sort of, uh, is sort of interesting, it's causing turmoil in the um, financial markets, is they have, the Federal Reserve has been more hawkish mm -hmm. and has sort of, uh, I would say, been increasing the money supply more, quite a bit more the slowly. The, more slowly. They they've, they've actually let uh, um, a bunch so, of their debt disappear right, right. instead and of renewing it. Yeah, and so they're allowing yeah. um, interest yeah. rates to drift up, and that is, you know, all things equal, making inflation less than it would be, but um, they kind of already let the cat out of the bag. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, they let, and it's they let a, a whole herd of cats. And they, they've had this zero interest rate policy for mm -hmm. about a decade, which is what has caused the stock market to go to the moon. Um, and then, okay, it's oh, now we're gonna you know raise the interest yeah, rate to yeah. you know two percent, um, and that's supposed to fix the inflation, which I think they've really you know baked into the cake with irresponsible mm -hmm. um, policies for a very long time. Um, we'll see what happens. My view is they would probably have to take quite a bit more aggressive action mm -hmm. than they. And they want can't, to yeah. to really stabilize they, prices. They can't because the, there's not a Volcker there. Volcker basically, uh, Jimmy I don't Carter. Think so yeah. For for a history lesson, folks in the 70s, right. Jimmy Carter balanced the budget. Uh, wanted to balance the budget through, mm -hmm. and he did it through inflation. And Vol Volcker said, "No, you're not doing that," and raised the uh, price of money. Well, uh, that's that's how yeah. you know. That's why Carter was a one-term president. Yeah, that's and uh, and. Uh, I sold uh, jumbo CDs to institutional clients when I was in that business that had a 15% uh, rate. Um, yeah, yeah, right. And, uh, and that's, uh, let's hope we don't see that again, folks, because if we do, we won't have a recession. We'll right, but have that, a depression. Yeah, that'd be pretty bad. But on, on the other end, that would stabilize prices. So, yeah. I mean, there's this oh, yeah. trade off. Nobody wants to um, pay the piper when the time comes. The problem is. Um, Okay, we're just going to inflate away the currency. Someone's going to pay. Oh yeah, there, um, there are no. It's, how about, it's how about a, this quote to close it off? Right. There are no solutions. There are only trade-offs. Yeah. I think that's a Stossel quote. Might and there's no such thing quote. as a free lunch. You can't. Yeah. Tan Staffel. Yeah. yeah. You, you print right. money. It's, no, it's you don't get something for free. That's. We're next. We're going to talk about Mr. Michael okay, Graves' so experience with crime, yeah. and then crime in general, and cops in general but let, let's talk about the, the the good out of this inflation just quickly before i move on sure people are 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 realizing that inflation is a bad thing that it hasn't disappeared from the planet it's the number one priority for every spectrum of the voting populace I in this agree. country people's except eyes are open now. for a few crazy radicals that will never have their eyes open about anything. Yeah, yeah. The, the public is paying attention and paying that attention. could be setting the stage for some positive change. So that's, that's a good thing. If, yeah. the, if the, 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 uh, the unwashed masses, that they used to call them at one time, uh, wakes up and looks up and doesn't, and realizes that their government is lying to them about uh, things, then they're gonna take whatever their government and its lackey lamestream media says with a grain of caution, with a grain right. of salt. Absolutely. Now let's talk about you in San Francisco and yes. then we'll go into the rest of it. That's right. So I had a, a pretty, um, to me, uh, an unusual experience over the weekend. I was in San Francisco um, for a day and a half mm. or so um, and my car was broken into and I had a bag full of you know, my stuff. It was, Nothing crazy expensive, but still probably hundreds of dollars, you know, if you count, like, uh, the price of the bag itself. Mm. And then I had a lot of clothing in there, and I had my passport in there. Um, and, you know, what this really indicates to me and is that San Francisco has a crime problem, um, specifically uh, car break-ins, uh, robberies, and burglaries. Mm. Tell, um, talk about the numbers. Uh, yeah, you, talk I think to, it's you talk to a cop. Pretty right? bad. Yeah. Well, I my understanding is that, you know, since like 2019, this category of crime, right, like homicides and this kind of thing aren't, you know, maybe there was a spike in 2020, but I haven't heard that it was mm -hmm. way up or anything. But um, this type of just, yeah, robberies, burglaries um, since 2019, yeah, it's kind of like gone up. I, I don't know if it's like quadrupled or something. It's, it's a lot. Um, mm -hmm. And it stayed 
high, which is really the more upsetting part to me. You know, I could give you a bit of a pass for 2020. You know, the, you know, the public servants didn't cause the pandemic, mm. um, but it stayed high. You know, people are out and doing business, and they still seem like they have the criminals have carte blanche to, and I mean this almost literally, to just rob vehicles in the city of San Francisco, any location, doesn't matter where in San Francisco, any time of day, and essentially nothing will be done. But, and I, I thought that you had said that yeah. they've got like eight cops to investigate they this kind They got eight cops. I called this guy, yeah. and he, um, you know, there is video evidence in this case. So this is this is a bit upsetting. You know, my car is robbed. Okay, that's, that's bad. Um, and... There's a guy who owns the property I was parked in front of. It's his house. He lives, I don't know if he lives there, but it's, it's certainly his house. And he says, I have um, cameras on the property, and I have these guys' faces on camera, and you should, you should report this, mm. right? And I'll support you. And he sent me the, the video and all that stuff. And I spoke with, S I filed the report with SFPD, and I spoke with them, um, with the burglary unit. And the guy says, Look, honestly, I'm looking at this, um, you know, the amount that you reported stolen, which I, I told them, you know, about a, I think I told them like $1,000, but that's probably a high estimate, mm -hmm. maybe 500 is more reasonable, but anyway, uh, for, you know, all that property, um, and he says that amount is not high enough to where it's very, it's at all likely that we're going to even investigate this. He says, mm -hmm. we will not investigate, and look, man, I'm sorry to be the spare of bad news, but um, there's about a thousand car break-ins per day in San Francisco right now, and our burglary unit has eight people on it. Mm. Mm. Let's, let's talk about that. Folks. And when you put it that way, it's not exact, It's not like a problem that guy can just solve by himself, no. but that's no. a crazy situation. So basically that means that, that uh, thieves blow a certain level, and I know for a while San Francisco was not even pursuing, um, they, they'd made, uh, they'd made uh, shoplifting uh, yes. less than $1,000 a I think that's a recent a development as of 2019 or 20 um, or something. Because of what they call progressive uh, uh, DAs and all the rest of that. So that means that uh, really as, as long as you steal less than $500 worth of somebody's stuff, that you're you're they're not even going to it's going to be a misdemeanor crime. they're going to they're going to slap you on the wrist and then more realistically a lot of these things aren't being investigated and in fact the police won't even pick them up because what's the point of picking up a criminal and putting him in jail they're just going to let him out mm. right yeah. it's not going to realistically be prosecuted so there's problems at multiple layers of analysis here and um you know the bottom line is i i i'm pretty disgusted by the whole thing. Um, I think San Francisco, from this perspective, from this crime perspective, is worse than New York at the moment. I just moved from New York, and I lived there for a long time, and they've, I think it's gotten worse since 2020 in New York, too, but it's not this ridiculous, mm -hmm. where it's just, you just get, you know, if you look away, you're just gonna get robbed. Mm -hmm. And, um, but that's where San Francisco is at now, and there's multiple uh, places to put the blame, but the bottom line is these, uh, you know, these police, this uh, DA, um, you know, the mayor, all these, whoever it is, this consortium of public agencies have the responsibility to protect the public from crime, at least to a reasonable extent, and the result has been really, they're just not, almost not doing it. Well, let um, me, let me, they're, they're actually, I should have included this, they actually don't have, uh, <laughs> yeah. they're, 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 by law, there have been many court cases that, that, that the, uh, uh, cops are not required to, uh, you know, put themselves at risk to stop a robbery or burglary, even though we think their job is to put themselves between us and the end crime. Uh, they can choose not to do that, and there's absolutely nothing we can do about it, even though I thought, I always thought that's what we paid them for, to serve and protect. But apparently, many, many court cases in this country have absolved uh, police of, of any responsibility, to especially to put themselves at risk. Right but uh, to even do what we consider to be their job. So uh, Yeah, it's the legal theory, which I think is, yeah. you know, if you were writing the laws, you might write them in your own favor too, that says that the mm -hmm. state agent, you know, it's like a one-way obligation. Mm -hmm. You gotta pay your taxes, but you don't have the right to expect we anything in return. Right I think it's ridiculous. Service. Oh, it is ridiculous, it's ridiculous. It's, and it's, it's so outrageous. ridiculous. It, yeah. You talk to the man on the street, you wanna talk about talking to the man on the street, anybody would think that that's ridiculous, mm -hmm. but that is, the state of affairs if you go read the law. There's a there's a wonderful there's another wonderful organization called Fee. I think it's Foundation for Economic, Economic Education. Education. And they write some great articles too. 
And they, one of their nice articles uh, talks about uh, the Uvalde uh, footage underscores the myth of police protection. Just call 911. Yeah. They had 400 cops, 300 plus cops. Yeah, sitting, the Uvalde shooting. Waiting. Just and, awful. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, and then, uh, what was the other recent uh, mass shooting where basically the same thing happened? And we know about a, a person who, actually, I think in Ohio. Uh, somebody opened fire in uh, in a mall. I guess malls still exist in Ohio <laughs> yeah. uh, with a rifle. Although how he wandered around with a rifle and sat in a bathroom for an hour and nobody realized he was there. And the man uh, had a concealed carry license, but if he'd followed the letter of the law, he wasn't supposed to have that weapon in that mall. Mm -hmm. um, uh, shot and killed the the guy with the rifle and prevented uh, many more people from dying. So in armed right. citizenry in this country, there there you can you can't get these statistics very easily because the FBI doesn't want you to have them. Police departments don't have them. Armed citizenry either prevents or stops uh, over two million crimes a year in this country, and uh, way more than than our our uh, our beloved uh, police folks. Um, right. Well, in San Francisco, people mostly aren't armed, mostly don't want to be armed, oh, if we're yeah, being honest. Yeah, yeah. And, um, but, you know, even if I, you know, they just make it really hard to own a weapon there. Yeah. Um, and, but yeah. you can't even put all the blame on that because I have to say, you know, those laws aren't much different than they were in New York and San Francisco than they were in 2018, 2019, yeah, yeah. but the situation has gotten way worse. And I think it's just, like I said, multiple levels of deterioration mm -hmm. and it's not happening everywhere right there no, are plenty of cities that haven't had this dictation guess, in, in public guess safety guess where it is happening yeah in blue cities with with yeah. uh, progressive DAs now i'm not a republican so i'm uh, uh, i can tell you pretty much almost guaranteed this isn't happening in Tulsa Oklahoma i think that's uh, right I, I i have a feeling it's not happening in um, um, utah uh, in um, it's not happening in um, boise idaho it's not happening in places where people value property. Property rights are the essential foundational rights for all other rights. If you don't have rights to your property, you have no rights. Yeah, well, so, what the heck are you supposed to do? Yeah. You know, you operate a, a store in San Francisco. You know, these um, pharmacies and stuff. You know, it's like Walgreens, ha you know, has an organized crime department. And they, mm -hmm. um, you know, San Francisco is one of the worst, per you know, it just has the most thefts in the nation. And then so, well, they got, what are you going to do? you got to close the store. You can't they make money. Close you know, the store. Giving Star away, Starbucks has closed uh, 18, 18 locations in, in California. In, and so it doesn't help Bruce anybody. And that, what's going to happen is you just can't even operate the store there. You can't. You go to downtown Sacramento right now and look at all the places that are closed. Yeah, Sacramento. I got back to Sacramento the day after I was robbed. And then I, uh, I think that day I went to get a sandwich at the Mr. Pickles on Folsom Boulevard. Mm. And they're kind of like, oh, sorry, we're like kind of busy because we're dealing with and their door had been smashed and they had had a break in. Mm. And I had a whole conversation. It's like, guys, I, I got to tell you what happened. And then the guy says, well, you we're know, gonna, we're going to move on to a couple more things. Mike. OK, but thank you very good. much for your your own personal story. Mm -hmm. um, there there is some good news. The the uh, in Manhattan, another progressive DA there uh, a gentleman in a store um, was defending himself from a robber and yes the, the, that's Jose uh, Alba yeah and uh, and he uh, defended himself with a knife uh, after being stabbed repeatedly by the guy's girlfriend. girlfriend and after being threatened where they said that I can't use the language is gonna blank them up uh, and mm -hmm. the Manhattan DA uh, charged the guy who defended himself in the store against an armed attacker uh, with murder. With murder, sent him to Rikers Island and uh, asked for five hundred thousand dollars bail. Yeah, and, the, and there's the, video evidence yeah. that he was that you know the and guy the girlfriend, he was assaulted. The and the girlfriend of the guy. Uh, the, and this, this to guy, this point, he's like sixty years old, you yeah. know, and this guy's like twenty five or something, and you know he's throwing him around in in his place of business. Yeah, in his place of business, and the guy, uh, the guy's girlfriend, uh, actually stabbed this guy also. And, and the last time I researched this a couple of days ago, she hasn't been charged at all. So um, it's, uh, there's something strange going on in the world, folks. And, um, you know, I'm not a law and order guy, but you own a store and somebody comes in to take your stuff, 
you know, what are you going to do? In New York, you can't own a gun to, uh, to, to shoot the guy, so what do you do? You've got this, it's your livelihood, probably. It's one of these little bodega-type stores, and, and, you know, that's how you pay your mortgage. Yeah. So um, we've got about five minutes, uh, and we're going to, we're, there is some, uh, some more good news. There is some more good news out there. Two stories. Uh, one, again, the well, last two from Reason. We should just call this a Reason show. <laughs> um, the Supreme Court tells cops to stop playing doctor. And what that has to do with is, is uh, the, the government, in its infinite wisdom, caused the opioid crisis by uh, setting some standards uh, that they said were guidance for uh, people treating pain. And they came out very recently and said, oh, you misunderstood uh, the guide. It was just guidance, not rules. But the, the police actually were arresting people uh, the police, who have no medical training whatsoever, the DAs have no medical training whatsoever, the prosecutors no medical training whatsoever, decide to arrest people who uh, they believed were prescribing uh, medication outside the quote-unquote guidance of the FDA. So the Supreme Court uh, has recently told Who's the DEA? cops, yeah. the cops uh, through the DEA to stop playing doctor. They don't have the qualifications. Yeah, so this was an interesting yeah. case. This was uh, Ruan versus United States, and basically this doctor, they were going to, I don't know, they were going to throw him in jail or something, yeah, I think. Yeah, 20 years. Yeah, because he violated DEA guidelines when prescribing prescription pain medication. Yeah. Um, and the Supreme Court basically you know, looked at this and said, well, you know, he made a good faith prescription just because he didn't follow your rules. You're basically getting in the way between, you know, Our interfering patient. in the relationship yeah. between the doctor yeah. and the patient. There's no reason to, and, yeah, there's no reason to do this. And the article also is at pains to point out that there really isn't an association between um, the opioid crisis versus prescription painkillers, right? Yeah. Like, uh, there was a it's large, it's like double the amount of uh, painkillers were prescribed between 2002 and 2014, but um, the you know deaths due to those painkillers is basically unchanged, mm -hmm. right? There isn't really what's no. mostly happening with the opioid crisis fentanyl. is fentanyl in street drugs and being used in conjunction with other drugs and alcohol. Yeah, and I I absolutely agree. Look it up, folks, and the, I want some good news. A court affirms the First Amendment right, again, another reason article, for people to record police, yes. even though one loony state out there says you can't do it closer than eight feet. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, the court says we have a right to film police doing whatever they're doing, and they, they can't take away our phones, they can't take away our cameras, and... Um, we have that uh, here on tape, folks. Yeah, so uh, basically what this is about is the um, extending First Amendment protections to filming police with your, your device. With your, your device. And on that note, I think we're just about done. We might actually be done. Thank you very much, Michael, for your, uh, for your knowledge and your participation in the show. Thank you to our hundreds of Thanks, thousands John. of viewers out there throughout the world. I don't know if we've got anybody on the South Pole watching. We might. Uh, and uh, keep watching, keep supporting the libertarian movement in this country because we are growing.